Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dietrich, and this is a 2016 Buick Cascada. And this car has always fascinated me because I could never understood why Buick bothered to put it in production in the first place. But I've always wanted to drive one, I've always wanted to review one, and since it is out of production and it's a convertible, it's perfect for bald man summer. So here we go. We are going to talk about what is a Buick Cascada. We'll have a look at the styling. We'll have a look at the cargo room and the passenger room. And we'll take a look at the features on this vehicle. And of course, check the slidey bar down below to skip to the part that you're most interested in. So just what is a Buick Cascada besides kind of a mistake on Buick's part? Well, this car actually started out life in 2013 as an Opel Cascada built in Germany by General Motors German brand Opel. And this car itself was also built in Germany. In 2016, Buick decided to bring the Cascada into the US market and sell it as a Buick to enter the white hot kind of sporty, kind of luxury, but not really convertible market. And by white hot, I mean cold as a dead fish. This car's natural competitors, the Lexus IS retractable hardtop convertible and the Volkswagen EOS were either dead already in the case of the IS or just about to die in the case of the EOS since 2016 was the last model year for that car. And of course, lest we forget, Eos is named after the Greek goddess of dawn. People don't want cars named after hungry old Greek broads. So the issues with the Cascada were that it was already kind of dated because it was a three-year-old design by the time it came out in the United States, and it was entering a segment of the market which was really not that popular at the time either. The reason why Lexus and Volkswagen took out their convertible options is not because they sold out of them, but because nobody really wanted them. And it turned out that nobody really wanted a Cascada either. Buick discontinued this car in 2019, and they sold just shy of 20,000 of them over the four model years it was available. So it basically sold about 5,000 copies a year, a little bit less than that. So not a very common sight. If you do see a Buick Cascada on the road, just know you're seeing one of 19,000 and change in the US market. So we'll move on to the styling of the Cascada. And this car always caught my eye on the road just because it is a convertible. With the top up, it has kind of an interesting sleek look to it. I'll admit that I've never loved the way this car looked, but I've never hated it either. And I have always found it somewhat interesting. I don't know, with the top up, it's like a very fast back roof profile. It's kind of hard for me to put into words. With the top down, it does still have kind of a rakish look. The A-pillar comes back at a pretty steep angle, and then the body of the car is angled up slightly. It doesn't quite give me the bathtub look that I love in convertibles, but it's pretty close. I do think this is a good-looking car, but not a great-looking car, but somehow they did always catch my eye coming down the road, and I guess that's kind of part of the point when you have a convertible. Now we'll have a quick look under the hood for the engine and transmission. All Cascadas for the US market were powered by General Motors 1.6 liter turbo engine, 200 horsepower and 207 torque. Although apparently up to 220 torque were available if the engine decided to go into overboost mode. It's not really enough to notice a huge difference. The engine does a pretty good job, but this is almost a 4,000 pound automobile. So it does have a lot of beef to cart around. So it's not a particularly fast car, but it does get onto the freeway nicely and get around town nicely. And it is a nice car to drive. The whole thing is hooked up to a six speed automatic transmission, which shifts smoothly and seems to always be in the right gear. So overall, the engine and the transmission in this car is very good but it was never really designed to be a super fast sports car or anything, and you can definitely feel that when you're behind the wheel. All right, now we're gonna have a look at the trunk, and to open it from the rear, we just push down on the bottom of the Buick Shield to release it, and then we can lift it up. Now there's an interesting touch right here. We have an additional set of tail lights inside of the vehicle so that if the trunk is up and out of the way, because that's where the regular tail lights are, you would still be able to see the emergency flashers if they were on. So that's a very Doug DeMuro-esque feature. Now you'll notice the trunk space is very small right now. If the top were up, we could move that out of the way and have a little bit more of a trunk. But I can still pull right here and fold down the back seats 
to have a little bit more access to the trunk space that there is. And just to be thorough, this is the trunk space with the convertible partition out of the way, but I don't like that. I'm gonna put it back down because I'm about to put the top back down because it's a beautiful day. Okay, now we are going to talk about the passenger room and I'm not expecting to be able to fit behind myself in this car, but it does do some cool stuff. So if you just pull that, the power seat goes all the way forward automatically. And I am going to heft myself into the back seat. Oh, I feel so tall up here. And look at those beautiful wildflowers. Ah, and if I sit here, apparently, if I do this, ah, it'll only come back until it hits the passenger's knees in the back. So now I'm here, and it better be somebody very short in front of me because that's how much room they have. But that was pretty cool. I will demonstrate that again. You can push this forward. It's not gonna, it probably doesn't have anywhere to go. And then if I do this, it tries to come back and then it gives up once it hits my knees. So that's a backseat feature in a Buick, baby. Oh yeah. Now we're gonna move on to the interior and talk about the features in here. And the first thing that really sticks out when you step into a Buick Cascada for the first time is the center stack. It has a whole bunch of buttons and a relatively small by modern standards, but probably normal by 2016 standard touchscreen in it. So the touchscreen is interesting, navigation was standard, so you do have navigation in this car and you can control it with touch, but you also have this knob in the very center of the whole jumble of buttons below it that you can uh, control certain things on the screen with as well. Not quite sure why they decided to use this setup, but that was what they went with. You do have heated front seats and a heated steering wheel as standard in this car. You also have dual zone automatic climate control, but it is controlled by two physical knobs, which is uh, GM style. They like doing it that way. It always feels a little bit kind of low tech to me, even though it's just the way that it's controlled and the dual zone climate control does work fine in this car. If you go further down in the center past the gear shift, you do have the control for the power operated convertible roof. It does operate at speeds up to 30 miles per hour and it's all automatic, no need to latch or unlatch anything. It does all the work for you. You also have a little switch in there that will put all the windows either up or down automatically. That is a fantastic feature for a convertible to have. All convertibles should have that. And in this day and age, pretty much all of them do. One convertible feature that this vehicle is missing is lockable storage compartments. As far as I can tell, you can't lock the glove compartment and you can't lock the center console. That's a little bit of a disappointment, but maybe petty theft is much less of a problem in Germany where this car was designed. You do have leather seats as standard and they are power on both sides of the vehicle. You still do get an old school switchblade key. Even in 2016, if you got the top, top of the line model, they never offered the Cascada with push button start in the US market. So whichever one of these you bought, you got this key, but it does include remote start. So at least you could push a button on the key to start the car. Now we'll move along to safety features. And in this base model, there's really only a backup camera and rear parking sensors, that's it. There are no other what we would consider modern active safety features included in this. If you did move up to the premium model, that would give you rain sensing windshield wipers, forward collision alert and front parking sensors, things like blind spot monitors or adaptive cruise control or some of that more modern stuff was never offered on the Cascada because again, this is a design that dates back to 2013. Thank you so much for watching my video on this Buick Cascada. I do genuinely really like this car. Um, I've had fun driving it over these last few days. It's a good convertible with the top down. It's great with the top up eh, not so much. You can watch my POV test drive video. There'll be a link to that in the description. And as always, please like my video, subscribe to my channel, and have a great summer. Bye-bye.